Would you live in the ghetto if I paid you a half million dollars? That's what we're talking about today, right? I'm going to propose to you a half million dollars, actually a little bit north of that, all right? Uh, technically speaking, we are talking $544,500. Would you live in the ghetto if I were to pay you that amount of money? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I work with real estate investors all over the world, help you guys accomplish your real estate goals. Now, today is a very special show. We're doing something kind of different, right? Today we're working with my man, Eli. Eli, you are a local cat. You are here in the Cleveland market, dog. And uh, I've been working with you. We've been doing some wholesaling together, right? We've been partnering up, trying to get some wholesaling going, okay? Now, uh, recently you sent me a triplex, okay, that you were thinking about buying and living in one of the units, right? Because to do so, right, to live in the unit, you can get in there much cheaper than if you were uh, to buy it as a pure rental property, right? You see, if you buy something like that as a pure rental property, folks, you get a loan for 75%, you got to put down a down payment of 20 five percent okay you don't have enough money to do that right but if you live in it okay if you live in it we can get you in there like three and a half percent down no problem right so i took it a step further and i found a property brother i found a property four unit apartment building if you were to live in this house bro be able to get you over half a million dollars to be exact if it goes according to my plan would you live in this house if I paid you $544,500, Eli? That is what we are talking about because that is the amount of money that you would get for living in this home. Sounds a little fishy. Sounds a little confusing. I assure you it's not, right? Part of this is a thought exercise, but the other part of this is this is a real house, and this could really happen. And I'm going to show you exactly how to structure the deal where you get to live here and get paid $544,500. Let's go into exactly how it works, how to structure this right after this. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. Let's pull up the house, right? Pull up the house. We're talking about some stuff. It sounds a little clickbaity, right? Would you live here if I paid you $544,500, right? Over half a million dollars. If you're confused, don't worry. It's not that confusing. What we like to call this, folks, is house hacking, okay? Before I made my millions in real estate, I also did some house hacking with that man right there, okay? First home I ever bought was a uh, single family house, it was 08 or 09, something like that, and I rented out the basement. We created a little basement apartment, and my man Steve, my brother right there, was my first tenant. How was, how was the house hack, brother? Oh, well, you know, it was, it was good for me. <laughs> we did a... Uh, we did a little bit of uh, drinking of the four locos when we built your uh, little apartment. So a couple of the walls were off plumb, and then my brother continued to drink a little bit of the four locos on work nights, uh, which upset my other roommate, my uh, wife, girlfriend at the time. <laughs> but we got through it, right? And uh, from there, right, that was the start of my real estate business. And, you know, fast forward to today, sold over $200 million worth of this stuff, right? So you can... You can really uh, take advantage of these house hack situations, right? So it's not all pie in the sky. And if you actually run the numbers, it actually makes sense, right? Like with this particular one, again, $544,500. That's how it'll work. But 
we got to talk about the pros. We got to talk about the cons, right? This is real world stuff. This can actually happen for you. But it's not all sunshine and honeybees, baby. Your tenant might not be your brother, okay? Here's what we have. This house, 1135 East 74th, Cleveland, 44103. They have it listed at $134,999. It's been on the market 17 days. What this is is actually two duplexes, right? So we have four units. And I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I'm going to tell you right now. This motherfucker's in the ghetto, okay? This, this neighborhood is definitely what I would call the ghetto, right? This is a ghetto neighborhood, okay? Don't think it's not. Right. I ain't going to sugarcoat it. Right. Would you get would you be willing to live in the ghetto for half a mil? That's the question. OK. Now we got three tenants in there. Right. Three tenants are already in this bad boy. And, uh, you know, if you look through the pictures here, what it looks like is it looks like what you'd expect ghetto apartment buildings to look like. Right. I mean, this is the empty unit. Right. This is the unit you're going to be living in. OK. You're probably going to want to fix that up a little bit. Do a little bit of uh, elbow grease. Put a little elbow grease on this. But, right, these are the other units. That one's not too, too bad. But this is definitely low-income investing. This is a difficult neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a very tough neighborhood, okay? I often talk to out-of-state real estate investors, and I discourage them uh, from buying properties in these neighborhoods, right? The price points are incredibly cheap, uh, but these are very tough to, to manage these assets. I often talk to them about how you shouldn't do the deal. Deals like that should be saved for the locals, a la you, right? You're going to live there, okay? Living there is going to do several things for you, right? It allows you to have eyes on your units 24-7. It allows you to save money. You don't have to pay somebody like me to manage the property. You don't have to pay somebody like me to cut the grass. You don't have to worry about getting people actually working for you because, like, big-time property management companies like Holton Wise, we typically shy away from properties like this, right, because it's very, very hard uh, for investors to pay us to operate the property and still make it profitable because of how difficult it is, not to mention it's hard for people like me to staff my company because a lot of the maintenance guys don't like Go into properties like this. Don't like going to these neighborhoods because they're dangerous, right? So when we talk about would you live here for half a million dollars, I ain't bullshitting you. I'm going to go over the numbers in a minute. You could make half a million dollars while living here, but I don't want to sugarcoat it and shit you that it's going to be an easy show, right? You are definitely going to have to live in the ghetto. Is a half a million dollars worth living in the ghetto, right? You're going to have to watch these tenants like a hawk. I would imagine you want to make sure your other three units are on Section 8. If you get them on Section 8, that's like the cheat code, right? With investing in the ghetto, investing in low-income neighborhoods, you run into people not paying rent, right? I mean, you saw the pictures. It's pretty sloppy, right? Pretty pretty gross in there. But that's not the like the worst, right? If you got some units that look like that, but the rent still comes in, hey, that's a pretty good case. That's a good scenario to have in the ghetto, right? That's probably about best case scenario. That's what you could expect, right? It is what it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles, man. That's what you're signing up for if you do a deal like this, right? That's the the pain, the blood, sweat, and tears that you're putting in to get that half a mil, right? So if you could do that and get your rent, that's that's it. That's that's what you're signing up for, right? So, how do you get your rent every single month? You got to go Section 8, man. You got to go Section 8. You go Section 8, government pays it, right? You don't go Section 8. You got to worry about people not paying rent. Then you got to evict them, this or that. Now, normally when you're in the ghetto and you evict people, you open yourself up to another new problem, which is your property becomes vacant, and then criminals from around the neighborhood will break in, steal your hot water tank, steal your furnace, uh, steal your copper piping. That creates a big problem. Probably not going to have that scenario when you're actually living there. Again, having eyes on the unit, watching it like a hawk, having like a one-on-one -on -one actual interpersonal relationship with your tenants, who hopefully will become Section 8 tenants one day, because uh, the, there's a couple current tenants in there. They're not Section 8. But as you turn these units over, you want them to become Section 8 is what I'm trying to tell you, right? Doing that, you could probably mitigate a lot of the issues uh, that someone who's more hands-off um, would be dealing with, right? A property manager cannot go to your rental property every single day. A property manager cannot sit on the fucking front porch every single day to make sure nothing bad's happening. But if you live there, you can, okay? So this is how the numbers would play out. This is where I will get the half a million dollars, right? You're going to live there, and you're going to make half a million. You're going to get paid half a million dollars to live there, right? 
this is how this would all play out. You got four units. You rent three of them for $750 a piece, okay? That's $9,000 each per year. The fourth unit, of course, is where you live, okay? So no rent comes in. $2,250 comes in, an average of $27,000. As far as the price point, when you're in the ghetto, things are cheap, 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 right? We have two duplexes on one lot. They're asking $134,999. You might be watching this like, damn, that's pretty cheap, dude. That is not cheap enough, okay? That's not even cheap enough. You would actually be overpaying. In this neighborhood, you don't have to pay $135,000 to take down two duplexes. I think that would be too much. I think what would be a reasonable price point for this property would be $100,000. $100,000, okay? Now, let's pay attention to how this all works out. As far as your rent goes, $2,250 a month. That's what you should anticipate. And this is going off the assumption that you've eventually put Section 8 tenants in there, right? Because I have a repairs and maintenance, a vacancy and non-payment, and a capital expenditure estimated expense, right? $1,350 a year for each of these three items, right? That's assuming you have Section 8 tenants. If you're in the ghetto and you're not renting to Section 8, it's, it's like too impossible for us to figure out how often you're going to collect rent because, you know, there's just so many variables. You really need to go with that cheat code and get government guaranteed rent in there. Then you could reasonably assume uh, how frequently you'll collect your rent. But of course, you'll still get turnovers here and there. And when you do your uh, turnovers, that's when you do the repair uh, majority of your repairs and maintenance, right? So that's why we're calculating those 1350 line items for each of those three things. CapEx, though, slightly different. CapEx is like your roof, your furnace is your hot water tank. The type of tenants you have don't really matter to those three items. But if you own a house for 30 years, right, a roof's going to last you 30 years. Hot water tanks are going to last you 15 years. Furnaces are going to last you 30 years. Furnaces cost about three grand to replace. Hot water tanks about a grand. Roofs about seven, eight. And the other stuff like painting and unit turns, I think you could do a lot of that yourself. But those capital expenditure items I just mentioned, you're probably going to need to hire a professional, right? You can't just be like a regular Joe Schmo and just hooking up a fucking furnace. It doesn't work that way. So the prices I gave you on those three items, that'd be if you paid a professional contracting company. But like as far as unit turns and painting units or fixing this or fixing that or service calls here and there, you need to be doing that stuff yourself, right? Saving that money, right? Cutting the grass. you got to cut the grass, of course, right? So you don't have a lawn care fee. And then, of course, big fee you don't have is you don't have property management fees, right? So reasonable expectations of performance. $2,250 comes in. You're spending approximately $764 a month to operate your rental property. That means you're going to profit every month. You're going to get paid $1,486 every month. That is what you can reasonably expect to take home, right? That is $17,832 a year, right? This could be your part-time job. Owning this home, managing this home could be your part-time job. Pays you seventeen grand a year on average. And here's where it gets good. You don't need really any money to do this deal, and I'm going to show you how to make that half a mil. This, this is the meat, okay? You're going to buy it for hundred grand. You don't need a hundred grand. All you need is thirty five hundred dollars, right? When you guys watch my show, I normally work uh, with pure investors, right? So we're utilizing investment property financing, which is typically twenty five percent down, okay? But this is owner occupied financing. You get so much better terms if you're going to live there. You have to live there for one year, just so you know. You could actually move out of this property after a year and move on to the next one. Again, it's called house hacking. I did it. My brother lived in my house. Turned out fucking great for me, right? Uh, maybe one day you'll have your own show. Hopefully it's not in fucking Cleveland, though, because then I'll have to come after you and fucking destroy you, because this is my territory! But anyway, back to, back, back, to the, back to making you numbers, okay? Back to making the numbers work here, right? So $100,000, right? All you got to do is put 3500 into it, okay? Bank's going to loan you 96 and a half. So that 1400 I said you were making, you got to pay this mortgage off now, so that's $407. That leaves a pure net cash flow after your mortgage, 1079 Okay, so that's 13000 a year, right? So you're making 13000 a year off your job managing this property that you didn't actually really pay for because you put pennies into it, right? All you put in is... Is uh is 3,500 right? So that projects out to a cash on cash return of 370 freaking percent, right? Because you only put 3,500 into it, but you're bringing home about 13k. Now here, here's the juice. Here's where I get the half a million dollar number. Okay, you take that 12,948 dollars estimated. Let's do this over a 30 year hold because that's the length of your mortgage, right? 
That would be, over that 30 years, $388,000 in cash flow, okay? Then let's say you're going to sell the property. And I'm not going to bank on some crazy appreciation or shoot smoke up your butt telling you properties are going to appreciate like crazy. This is the Cleveland ghetto, baby. I don't want you to forget that, right? So I'm just going to tack on 2%, right? Keep up with inflation. The dollar inflates. So 30-year value, 160 k right? You're buying it today for 130 or I'm sorry, 100 160 is what you sell it for, right? And after that 30 years, by the way, you ain't got no more mortgage, right? You got your mortgage paid off before you took home your 388000 right? So 388000 plus your $160,000, okay? That is $548,000. But the number I gave you at the beginning of the show was 544 and a half because don't forget, you did originally invest 3500 That, folks, is where I got the half a million dollar number, the 544 and a half thousand dollar number so it's up to you will it be super easy all the time no hell no but i don't know anybody else that's getting paid a half a million dollars to live somewhere so the question to you now is you got to go back to the drawing board as a would-be new investor who wants to house hack would you be willing to live in the cleveland ghetto for a half million dollars Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.